Hey Jules Bliss Vegan and as always welcome to my channel and for those who are new I hope you can benefit. I just wanted to explain because some people are new they're like wait where's the talk on food it said vegan she's just talking about all these other things. I know it's true but I mostly stem from a foundation of being a food addict and a compulsive overeater who's always in recovery and what I've learned is that it's seldom about the food. It's almost always about the underlying emotions, whether it's HALT, which is one of my videos on being hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, and that provoking you, whether it's feeling neglected. Um, you know, any of those unresolved issues are usually what lead to poor choices regarding food, or in my case, burying my body in a ton of weight uh, with a false hope of protection. Which, of course, as I'm unbearing, is very difficult because a lot of the layers which contained unresolved issues are coming out. And it's a risk I'm willing to take, but there's nothing easy about it. So, yes, I talk about food occasionally, but I mostly talk about the issues that drive us to abuse our bodies with food. All right. So, another thing that I do is that I often read just daily thoughts or self-help books. And one of my favorites is Overeaters Anonymous, and it's called For Today. And it's just daily thoughts. It always starts with a quote, then it discusses it, and then kind of gives an end game or goal. So here's another one. And this quote says, We don't love qualities, we love persons, sometimes by reason of their defects, as well as their qualities. And that's by Jacques Meriton, which I'm probably mispronouncing. Uh, but anyway, we don't love qualities. We love persons, sometimes by reason of their defects, as well as their qualities. And that's just accepting the whole person, right? And this is on self-acceptance, really, in the end. It's talking about others, but everything we process is filtered through our own mindset and how we feel about ourselves, really. So this is the talk. And it says... To love the whole person is not the same as thinking so-and-so is fine, but the minute you say but, you have negated any half compliment you were about, about to give, right? It says, I may sometimes wish friends could be free of certain shortcomings for their own sake. Ha ha. <laughs> but it is those very defects mixed in with their fine qualities that make up the total personality of those who are dear to me. So true, we have to accept the whole person, the good with the bad. So it goes on to say, do I really accept people's defects or do I secretly demand perfection, going from person to person in a futile search for the ideal friend? This is a question I must consider carefully, for the answer shows not merely how I feel about others, but how far I have progressed towards self-acceptance. And finally, it says, for today, and this is so important, recognizing that I still have a tendency to expect perfection in myself and others is a good beginning in letting such expectations go. Recognizing that I still have a tendency to expect perfection in myself and others is a good beginning in letting such expectations go. And, you know, that's something I'm always working on. How can I let go of that false desire to be perfect when there is no perfection? You know, um, when something's bothering me about somebody, and they often say this, whatever kind of irks or provokes you in another person is probably something you possess within yourself that you don't favor, <laughs> some characteristic you don't favor within yourself. I don't know if that's always true, but I always take time to reflect. And sometimes when my students are just driving me crazy, I have to pause and go, is it really them? Or am I tripping because there's something going on in me? Because some days those behaviors don't bother me at all. What is it about today? And I'll sit with that for a moment. And usually I'll conclude, yeah, it is them. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Often I'll say, you guys, I'm so sorry. I'm struggling with something right now, and I'm sorry if I'm being short with you. Uh, and they'll be like, that's okay, Miss McCants. We'll just do whatever, you know. Anyway, um, I'm pretty good about that. But can you accept the whole person? And also, can you recognize the bottom line that we can't change anyone, truly? 
We can change our perception, which may ease our life regarding them. Um, they can choose to change, but we can't fix or change anyone. <sighs> I don't like to sit with that sometimes because I'm like, but come on. I do believe prayer can change a person, and I do leave it to God to do that. But mostly I pray for the grace to change my perception, to ease both my burden and to allow me to be more accepting of others. All right, that's the talk, people. I hope that does something for you. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to support you. Like if you like, join us if you haven't, and best of all, be blessed.